This is my video review of the X370 Prime. Now it does carry the Prime name and that generally is associated with the entry to mid ranged products from Intel and it sports visually similar aesthetics with a black and white and a monochrome finish. Features are decent for £155. We have eight SATA ports along this edge and it's this particular area here that has had the drastic change. We don't have any white shrouding down the edge. Obviously, comparing this to the crosshair, we have less on the I.O., but there's still a decent amount for the USB ports and such. Definitely fair for the asking price. So yes, visually it's nice, I just think it's a little bit basic. We have SLI and Crossfire support, a single M2 slot, and when it comes to fan connectors, we have absolutely loads. RGB header support, of course, because the internal lighting on this model is a little bit basic with a single audio lane light. Now you can build upon that and we have a USB 3.1 front panel header. So yes, visuals are pretty nice. They should please the masses or anyone that wants a basic black and white monochrome build and they want to expand upon it with RGB. So then, those were the numbers. Let's briefly talk about my feelings towards the product. Good points, bad points, what's hot, what's not, the usual sort of thing. So, uh, first area to zone into is the memory. Um, I'm gonna come back to this particular section at the end of the video, um, for those that have got a little bit more time. But in a nutshell, being a launch product, and because of all sorts of complicated reasons that I'll talk about later, there wasn't really a lot of time between AMD green lighting and then the third parties getting their products to market. And in turn, it's been a little bit of a rocky launch with the uh, BIOS. I don't think it's fully mature yet. And it certainly wasn't when I received the product, but since updating it, um, I've noticed a significant improvement. And speaking to the team, and from all the information I've got, I'm 100% confident that memory is going to be a lot easier to work with in terms of what works out of the box and running at higher frequencies. Now, it was a little bit testing at first to get my kit running at 3000 megahertz, despite the fact that it works in other products such as the Intel. Um, and I reviewed back to front this time around. I went high end then sort of mid range with the Prime. I've already had a look at the Crosshair um, and that was a lot smoother because I had a, a very recent BIOS to play with out of the box straight away. Um, and it was smoother, whereas here it's, it was a little bit rocky. But based on everything that I've got, if you've got any concerns about your kit running, and particularly running at higher frequencies, really there's no need. So the numbers that I've got from the BIOS that i played with, again, I'm confident that with time there'll be a little bit more to come. But given that this is £100 less than the Crosshair, the differences between the two are sort of justified. Now, in terms of visuals, despite the fact that I do like the black and white element, and it does appeal to me, when I saw the naming Prime, I was quite excited because to me, Prime means top end visuals with price factored in. What you seem to get is a better looking board than what you expect for the price point when you compare the Prime models from Z170 and Z270 against the competition. They always seem to look a lot better um, and they've got this sort of classy feel to them. Now they are above budget and they're hovering around midpoint. Um, but yeah, back on point. When I saw the name, I kind of wanted and expected that white shrouding down the side. Um, you know, some users don't particularly like it, but for me, it really neatens up and cleans the product up and, and gives it a nice finish. 
and to see it missing was a little bit disappointing um, but it is what it is perhaps down the line we'll see some other models but for now the black and white side it's nice it just feels a little bit unfinished to me um, the heatsink around the VRMs and such it's nice again and it is very prime like but without that trying to finish it off it, it just doesn't quite work for me so uh, I like it I don't love it uh, lighting now again coming back to that price point it's about 155 pounds here in the UK which is bound to bounce up a little bit after I record this video but considering the hundred pound difference uh, feature set aside just talking about lighting for now it would have been nice to have a little bit more but you can't really expect it for um, what's on offer from the aspects of the features and different things there had to be some sort of give and take from Asus or Asus so you know it's justified it's a little bit basic though however what's really clever is the aura support now you've got the RGB header in there and as I've talked about in other videos as soon as you couple in something else with RGB whether it be memory a graphics card likely SSD soon and certified cases it really does pop even just an RGB strip alone is enough to light up and give uh, the product a little bit more sense and you know presence to it so as is it's okay but it does need built upon and you know that's what's good about Aura the software is good and the RGB header and the sync and the compatibility once it's all you know built upon it looks good and it works really well so yeah don't grumble about the RGB side yes it is a bit basic but as I said expand upon it it doesn't cost much money um, a performance in general I didn't find any weak areas so I'm particularly pleased about that uh, which is something that I found in the crosshair which it was strong when directly compared to Intel this is uh, for M2 the USB SATA general memory performance all those were very very strong and again that is pretty much the case on the prime there's no you know standout areas where USB is weak or you know anything like that it's a general all-around solid product now when it came to the CPU side again I feel it could be a BIOS issue there were a couple of little dips here and there but but there's nothing major that makes me think this is you know a product that you need to worry or you know skip past um, so yeah visuals almost there for me should please the majority of the consumer lighting it's justified it it had to be that way yeah it probably would have been nice to have a little bit more but there weren't really any zones or parts on the board that made sense to put any extra lighting because we haven't got the shrouding down so again I'm okay with that performance in general yeah it's good solid no big issues now overclocking it's as good as the crosshair in the sense that there's a lot to play with there's not as much to play with and obviously if you're going for the best numbers the you want to push your cpu hard you need something higher up this is 155 pounds after all this really should be aimed towards gamers who need the sli aspect now it's really early days and uh, you know it makes no sense for me to put a big exclamation mark over the product and suggest that you wait um, there are other options coming from all brands from Asus obviously with uh, the different chipset for blah, 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 blah. but for now your choices are the Prime or the Crosshair and it's very much a case of do you want to push hard go Crosshair do you just want good solid gaming experience go Prime so that's going to wrap up my video I've thoroughly enjoyed working with the product now as I said just to echo that again if you're worried about BIOS issues performance issues niggles with memory just wait a little bit longer but by the time I've done this video got it all uploaded to the channel there's probably going to be a release to the masses anywhere so yeah that's going to do it now I did say I would ramble a little bit more for the other guys that wanted to stick around as to why we're in this situation so here we go now I won't get into the ifs buts and maybes I'm just going to deliver the information I've got um, try and keep it as factual as possible but you know I might throw in the odd opinion here and there so the Ryzen launch, the hype train if you like, it was on full steam. Um, obviously AMD spent a lot of time comparing their chips to the 6900K and they were very selective about information that was given despite all the leaks and different elements up to it. But the reality is from them signing off and finalizing things and then the third parties such as Asus and the other brands getting enough time to tweak their BIOS, have everything ready and tested and hitting the market 
It just wasn't enough. Um, and there's no point in playing the blame game because this is the situation we're in. Um, availability was good and strong at the start. Whether it was just that there was a crazy amount of sales, I don't really know. But we seem to sort of go up, hit the pinnacle of interest, and then all of a sudden, all we're talking about now is where is it? Um, that'd be motherboards and CPU stock issues here in the UK. This, I can only talk about the UK for now. Um, I very much imagine this is the case elsewhere. But that is the main issue, that, you know. And if you had to blame anyone, you could say AMD did things wrong or whatever. But this is where we're at. And for the first time with any launch product, I am suggesting that you wait a little bit if you're uncomfortable. Um, certainly. Google your RAM for sure. See if there's any other issues popping up. Um, what I will say in ASUS is the blah, 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 Asus, Asus, uh, really, it's going to be one of them videos. In ASUS's <laughs> defense, what's happening here behind the scenes is they have their hands tied and don't have the usual um, sort of hands on approach of grabbing memory, speaking to other vendors, and getting all the code into the BIOS and making it work. This is all down to AMD. So if you want to be pointing your finger again, don't blame the third parties. It is just a bit of a, a messy launch. Um, going forward, as I said, speaking to other uh, reviewers and with the information I've got, I have very, very strong beliefs that things are going to get better in terms of compatibility. So if you want to wait, I do understand that. If you've got, um, because this isn't just high-end kits as well, this is some others that are a little bit iffy. Um, the reality is you might just not be able to get the one click set it and forget it type of deal that we're used to from uh, Intel with XMP you might have to manually go in and play around but um, Ryzen is basically an enthusiast product anyway that's the product uh, CPUs that we've got now so if you're coming into this um, do expect to have a little bit of a play around um, and for now I'm talking about my general experience with all products not just the Prime so yeah, that was my little rant, if you like. It's not the end of the world, but give the brands time to play catch up and I'm sure your things will be better. But that's going to do it for today's video. Thanks to listening to my ramble and I'll catch you guys in my next one.